Hello everyone, it's Miss Quids again. In this video, I am going to be doing an extension to my previous LaTeX video, which was introducing how we can write algorithms or pseudocode using a couple of different packages in LaTeX. And this video is actually a response to a request to look at the switch case statement in LaTeX in, in terms of algorithms. So this is what we are going to be looking at today. The packages that I looked at in the pseudocode algorithms formatting video was verbatim, which you don't need to import. It's just there as an environment. It will print whatever you write in the format that you write it. We also looked at algorithmic and algorithm 2e. And so that's what we're going to be looking at today. In terms of the algorithm that we are going to consider for switch cases, I've decided to pick the Fibonacci algorithm. This algorithm, as it's normally written, is usually written with if else statements, but I just wanted something simple, something short that can use case statements. So that's what we're doing here. In terms of like showing what the algorithm looks like, it is here. I know there's also an iterative version of this algorithm, but of course we're going to use the recursive one because it includes cases. And yes, so this is what the algorithm looks like. It takes in a particular value of n, and depending on that value of n, if it's zero, the algorithm returns zero. If it's one, it returns one. Otherwise, it will return Fibonacci of n minus one plus Fibonacci of n minus two. So as I said, I've included the verbatim implementation, as it were, um, writing up of the Fibonacci algorithm. And as you can see, as, as we've seen in the last video, the way that it works is you just type what you want in the format that you want, and it will print that verbatim, as it were, with a mono font, so like a typewriter. So because it's all up to you, it's it's all your choice how you want to write it up. I've written it up kind of like a Python-ish way with uh, colons. You could write it in a C-like or Java-like way with curly braces. Again, it's completely up to you. So this is how I've decided to write it. I've included the break statements here. You know, when we do a particular case, we don't want to do anything after it. And if we were to see what this looks like in terms of the output, then it looks like this. It is just printing out exactly as I've written it. So yes, not anything too interesting there. I'm going to break away from the ordering that I used in the last video. So in the last video I did verbatim, then algorithmic, then algorithm 2e. This time I'm going to do algorithm 2e first and then we'll look at algorithmic after. And you'll see why in a moment. So for algorithm 2e, it actually has predefined commands for switch statements and the case and so on. So that's quite straightforward to use. In terms of the exact environment we need to use, it is called algorithms. So I've just began, begun and ended it here. And as I said, there is a built in switch statement. And the way that, that is written is just backslash switch with capitalized S. It takes in an argument, which in our case is just N. And then the block is defined with the curly braces. So it is Java like or C like. The case is also defined with, again, an argument just like with switch. So in this case, the, in this case, the first case is zero. And once again, the block is defined using the curly braces. So that's all straightforward. In terms of doing a return, that's also built in. So we can do backslash return and we are returning zero. In terms of straightforward statements like this, in algorithm 2e, you do need to include semicolons with the backslash semicolon. I said in the last video, it doesn't seem to work if you omit that. So that's how we have to define the end of it. And if you want to include a break, you can just do that like this. So this is case zero. I'll just fill in for case one because it's going to be exactly the same now. The last thing, the default case, what will happen if we don't satisfy either of the first two cases is a bit different here. So they don't have a default keyword. What they have is other. So what we do is we write other, define the block. And again, we can just return this here. So I'll do that now. So I've just included the calls to Fibonacci with the arguments n minus one, and again with the argument of n minus two. And this is how it looks like with algorithm 2e. So fairly straightforward because we've got the built-in switch case other commands or blocks to work with. And if we were to compile this, we can have a look at what it looks like in terms of the output. And here we can see a comparison between using verbatim and using algorithm 2e. 
just as we saw before, algorithm 2E does use these lines to kind of show where the block spans and it has helpful kind of, you know, beginning and end statements. So you can see where each thing begins and ends. And yes, it's, it's quite nicely formatted. But of course, the, the beauty of this particular one is the fact that it's all defined in, in, in algorithm 2E itself. So yes, the last one that we want to look at is algorithmic. Now, this one was a little bit trickier to implement. So unfortunately, unlike algorithm 2E, algorithmic doesn't actually use or doesn't include switch and case and other or default at all. So you have to de define it yourself. I did do quite a bit of work trying to get it to work with algorithmic. I did find this LaTeX forum where someone did actually define the commands to use. I tried to get it to work with algorithmic. Unfortunately, I could not. And I'm not quite sure why I had to look at the documentation. And for what it's worth, this particular kind of implementation was given by the same user on a Stack Overflow flow post as well and someone else got the same error as me so I, I, I don't know why um, so I've had to go a little bit different so I'm not quite solving it with algorithmic but I am using algorithmic x. So algorithmic x is really great to use in this particular situation because it is essentially algorithmic with the ability to define new commands very very easily. And this is something that didn't take too much work for me to do. And so, yes, in, in terms of how it works is, you know, very similar <laughs> to algorithmic. Um, but it, as I said, it makes it easier to define new commands. So fortunately, I was also able to find someone's implementation using algorithmic X. And this did work for me. And one thing to note is that you're not actually using a package called algorithmic X. You're using a package that is called alg pseudocode, but it includes algorithmic X. I have included that and that was what all of this stuff was here at the beginning. What I actually need to do is you may notice here we've got switch, we've got case, we've got assert, although we don't use assert. What we don't have here is a default or an other otherwise kind of case here. So that's something that I had to define myself. But because of how easy this is to kind of, you know, you've got the documentation, it is quite easy to understand. It wasn't overly difficult for me to do this. So you can see three components, alg new command, alg def bit, the alg text. The alg new command defining how you want the keyword to look from what I understand. So if I were to just copy and paste this bit onto a new line, then rather than algorithmic assert, what I want is I'm going to call it default. So I'm going to call this algorithmic default. And the keyword that I want to use is default. So I'll just pop that there. The next part, the alg def, did have to kind of look in the documentation for this part because it's a bit more complex. So as you can see, it says here, alg def is the one defining macro. In the solution that I have used and adapted, they have included the flags uppercase S and uppercase E. So starting command with text, continuing command with the default text. The documentation makes a lot of sense. You can read the description and see that essentially for the flags that you include, you need to include specific kind of arguments or, or parts when you are calling algdef. So not all of these are going to be necessary and not all of these are used in the kind of solution that I'm using and adapting. From reading this paragraph here and in combination with the whole list of everything that could be included, I found that the likely ones that are being used are these ones here. So we have algdef, the flags, which was the capital S and E, the new block, which is an all capitalized kind of keyword that you want to use and what the start and end is, which makes sense for us because not only is case, for example, not only does it have a start and an end of case, so too does default. So there could be multiple things you want to put in there. Let's go through each of these in turn. If we were to look at what we have here for switch and case, we can essentially again adapt what we've got here. So the SE is the same, similar kind of thing that we want here. I'm going to change this to be default. We want the start kind of keyword to look like this default. We want the end one to be end default. Now this square brackets with one seems to correspond to a start param count. I'm not actually including any parameters to default, so I'm not sure why this was needed. But if I were to remove it and remove the corresponding hash one, this didn't work. So I seem to need to include that. That is one thing that I am a little bit uncertain about. But we do have the start and the end text. So the start text is algorithmic case, um, sorry, algorithmic default when we do change it. 
which maps across to this here. And then algorithmic end will be the end. So we want end default. And if you were to kind of look, the, look at this and map it across to what we're actually doing in the code and then the output, it should make a lot of sense. Another thing that I'm not completely certain about is where we need the alg text here. I did try looking it up in the um, documentation and I couldn't find an easy explanation for this. I have a feeling this may come from algorithmic originally, not algorithmic X, simply because it's not mentioned in the algorithmic X documentation at all. But this is all of the setup that we need to get switch case statements to work. And so, yes, let's let's get started on the actual bit of code now. Um, so now that we've defined it, it should look quite a bit like algorithm, al sorry, algorithm 2E in terms of how it's defined. So I'm beginning in the and ending the algorithmic environment. So that's what we're using. It's still just called algorithmic as the environment. And now we can use, just like we did before, we have access to switch case default keywords. So we can just do switch on n, but we don't need to do the kind of blocks this time. The way that it kind of works here is rather than having the blocks to say this is the start, this is the end, you actually need to do start and end. So I may as well show you that now. So at the end we're going to do end switch. And indenting here is more for our understandability than anything else. So the next thing that we need to do is, is the case. So we include a case for zero, and likewise we end the case and then any anything we want to be part of the case for the code to do or yeah the pseudo code to do when we satisfy this case goes in between and so all we just do is state because this state comes from algorithmic originally the way that we just do return is just like this we could define it ourselves return zero if you want to do break that would again just be a state which again i could just do it like this and so this is the case for zero setup. So I will do the same now for one. And finally, we do the default, which I defined it as default. So we do it like this and default. And this maps nicely to here. So we start with default. We end with end default. When it gets printed out, it will go algorithmic default, which is the default keyword. And then it will end with the keyword end, which will be defined elsewhere and then default. So it will say start default sorry here it will say default then it will say end default afterwards and it's pretty much the same kind of state thing as before except we do it with the fibonacci as the return like this and this is the end of the algorithmic one so let's have a look at how this works and as you can see what i've actually included this is my fault for copying and pasting is that <laughs> much earlier on when i did the when i defined the default is that we have this typewriter font for the word default when actually I wanted the bold face like the two cases. So I have just gone back to here and I have changed this to text bold face. And so this is what it looks like. So yes, we've got switch and do and then the cases with the breaks and the default statement, which is what I defined myself. So it's quite a lot of defining things just to get this to work, which is already set up in algorithm 2e. So here we have, you know, the three kind of alternatives, which I will actually open all three now and show you. So we have verbatim here. The positives with this is you can define it exactly how you want. The negatives is that nothing is really defined. So you have to make sure everything is exactly as you want it to. Algorithm 2e has the switch and the cases and the other whys or the default all defined for you. So you can just use it as you wish. The negative with algorithmic or algorithmic X as well is that these are not defined for you. So you have to define them yourselves. Of course, that then comes with the positive of anything you want to include. You can make look as you want. You can change things around as you want. Um, so this is how you can use switch cases in the different packages that we saw in my original latex pseudocode and algorithms video. So yes, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all later.